What's the best part of the school year? Summer! We love summer, right? Students get the time off, they're heading to the pool and that kind of thing. Teachers get the summer off and school leaders know that this is finally time that they can get real work done. In today's video, I wanna share nine questions you can use as an end of the year reflection strategy for school leaders. That's right, so summer is a great opportunity to level up a school and yourself individually as a school leader. This is a time where the students, the staff, the parents aren't around, and so these distractions, right, are gone, and you can really move a vision forward and work on yourself to level up your skill set. In today's video, I'm gonna share nine powerful reflection questions. You can use these as an end of the year reflection strategy for you, for a ruckus maker, an out of the box leader making change happen in education. And it's important, yeah, to work on yourself, right? To uh, develop yourself, move the school forward. But just as a quick encouragement before I get into the nine questions, use the summer to carve out some time to unplug, right? Make sure you plan activities, uh, you connect and develop you know, those relationships that matter. I've, I've shared this quote before, you can't pour from an empty cup. So really make sure that you refuel, replenish your energy so that you're able to serve powerfully in the next school year. Let's get into the nine questions, starting with question number one. Before we do, uh, eight of these nine, I just wanna give credit where credit's due. I learned these questions from a, an ex internal executive coach at Google, his name is David Peterson, and I attended one of his uh, leadership and coaching sessions at the World Business Executive Coaching Summit. So super thankful uh, to David for creating these questions and I wanna pay it forward uh, and teach them to you right now. So let's get into question number one. Now actually the first three questions are suggested by David to be quarterly questions. So every three months these are things that you can think about. Even though I'm making a end of the year sort of reflection video, I wanna share these three quarterly questions too, just to add these tools to your tool belt. So answer them at the end of the year, it's probably an end of the quarter, and then start ans answering them every three months as well. Given my key priorities for the quarter, what capabilities should I be developing? So given my key priorities for the quarter, what key capabilities should I be developing? This question is great because we should not be stagnant as school leaders. If you are standing still, other people are moving faster, they're moving past you. They're getting better while you're staying the same. So I hope that you have some goals, some ideas uh, of what you're working toward. And thinking about that, who do you need to become in order to realize those goals, right? So that's all I have to say about question number one. So let's move on to question number two. Where am I making excuses for something I need to take personal responsibility for? I love this question. Where am I making excuses for things that I need to take personal responsibility for? One of the core values at my company is called being the board. And being the board basically just means that you take responsibility for the outcomes that you create, right? Uh, I forget the full quote, but basically systems are perfectly designed for the outcomes that you see. So if you don't like the outcomes that you see, then you need to look at yourself and, and fix it, right? If you love what you see, the outcomes that are producing, then you can celebrate that too, because guess what? You are the one who is driving that performance. So what do you need to take responsibility for? Great reflection question. That's all I wanna say about question two. Let's move on to question number three. What do I need to do to manage my personal growth and professional development more effectively? Oh, this is in my sweet spot, right? As a leadership coach, I love this stuff. In 2021 alone, I've invested over $15,000 in my own development, whether that's uh, business coaching, leadership coaching, or mindset coaching, because I know the bigger, better, stronger, more uh, generous, you know, just leveling up in general, the more that I pour into myself, again, just like I talked about in the intro, you can't pour from an empty cup. I wanna have an abundance of energy, ideas, 
uh, techniques, strategies that I can give and serve the leaders that I take care of. So anyways, what do you need to do in terms of your personal professional growth? Uh, maybe it's working with a coach. I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Possibly we'd be a great fit. Who knows? Uh, if you'd like to find out, send me an email, daniel at betterleadersbetterschools.com. Be happy to offer a complimentary session and we can figure out uh, what coaching might look like together. I have a leadership community, right, with uh, groups of school leaders from around the world. The cohorts are uh, capped at 15. We launch with three plus a head facilitator. But if you would love the weekly cadence of discussing education and leadership at a deep level, maybe the mastermind's right for you. And so I'll put a link in the description, but at betterleadersbetterschools.com forward slash mastermind, you can learn all about what we do and apply. Maybe I'm not the right fit for you, but there's plenty of coaches, programs, masterminds, books, courses, whatever you do, pick some area you want to grow in and make sure you're investing in yourself this summer. That's all I have to say about question three. So let's move on to question number four. And now we're getting into the annual questions. So question four is, who do I want to be? What values do I want to live by? This is a great question. Who do I want to be? What values do I want to live by? Maybe you've done the hard work like I have identifying your core personal values, not school or organizational, but who you are. I've actually distilled my values down to a single, very short phrase, which I call my personal philosophy. And that is to be an intentional catalyst because I know on this video or stepping into a room or picking up a call that I have energy and act as a catalyst, right? Change is going to happen. And so my question is, do I want to create change that is negative or positive? And how I show up directly impacts that. And so I think about those values and who I want to be, what values I want to live by. Uh, being an intentional catalyst is actually an affirmation that I repeat to myself every single morning. And I've found uh, when the going gets tough and I don't want to be the best version of myself, that personal philosophy bubbles up into my consciousness and often helps me course correct. Doesn't always work, sometimes I still mess it up. But there, there are times when I need to hear it and it's a gift that I give to myself and I'm able to do what I need to do. So that's all I wanna say about question number four, moving on to question number five. Question five, what inspires me and fuels my passions? Another great question. So. Uh, if you are looking for this video to think from a school high level in terms of end of year reflection questions, that's not this. You know that I care about the individual school leader and that's who I coach. And I believe if you are at your personal best, then a ripple effect happens. So thinking about what inspires you and what fuels your passions, taking time to sit and think and chew on that question deeply, that's great because understanding of again of who you are now and who are who you are becoming nothing is more important than asking those type of questions that's all i have to say about question number five so moving on to question number six am i living my life the way i want to where do i stand relative to what truly matters question six this is a tough one and it makes you think about your life outside of school because here's the thing your professional life is important, but that's only one part of the beauty that you are as a human being. And so thinking about your family, your relationships, your passions, your hobbies, that's what makes up this complex human being that is watching this video right now. So don't neglect that, right? Think about, are you living the way you want to? And if the question is no, where do you need to course correct? I teach a lot about ideal day, ideal week. I've think I have videos on that and maybe we can link up to them here uh, in the description. But the point is this, I want to design a business or in your case, uh, leading a school that serves me, right? And that speaks to me and uh, aligns with who and how I want to live every single day. If I left uh, school leadership to serve school leaders and then was just as stressed out, uh, just as unfocused, just as, you know, spread through just all the different tasks that need to be done each day, then I've failed myself. I have an idea of an ideal life. You should as well. And 
form your school responsibilities around that life. If you think you can, I'll challenge you on that because there's plenty of leaders that I serve who can are enjoying the best of their personal and professional lives. That's all I want to say about question six. Moving on, question number seven. Am I on the path to become the person I truly want to be? So seven is building on to six in terms of your passions and uh, living the life you want to. Now it's just considering the path. So again, a course correction. And if you need to add things like fitness or proper diet or connecting with family and friends, do that. A lot of times it's more about what you need to say no to. So eliminating all the distractions, all the things that are competing for your focus, your time and your energy, get very uh, precise about that. Remove what is getting in the way because you only get this one chance, right? And so I hope that you are on the path to become who you want to be. And if not, then switch gears. That's it with question seven. Question number eight. Where do I want to be a year from now and how do I get there? I think it was Seneca who said, if one does not know to which port one is sailing to, no wind is favorable. So the point is that you probably are sailing somewhere. You're living life. You're going through the time continuum. Do you know where you're headed? Because wind is at your sails. You're getting pushed somewhere but are you ending up where you want to go? That's all we're gonna say here about question eight, so moving on to question number nine. Question number nine is actually one that I created, and this one I am inserting here. It's basically a riff on Dan Sullivan's The Gap in the Game. Uh, briefly, what that's all about is we feel a gap when we um, sit in the present and look to the future where we wanna go, right? And we haven't accomplished all the wonderful things that we have planned, and sometimes that dissonance, uh, that, that gap that exists between where you are and where, you want, where you're going and what you want to accomplish in the future, that can lead to negative emotions and feeling you know, like a disappointment, a failure, unworthy, etc. The trick is actually to look backward, right? And that's called the game. So when you stand in the present, you look back to see how far you've come and look at the progress you've made Dan Sullivan calls that the game. So I want to insert this question here because a lot of what we were thinking about is who do we want to be? How do we want to level up? Where are we going? Are we on the right path? And then I want to hit pause just super quick and look backward. You probably had an amazing school year. I hope you did. And even if you had what you would call an average or even unsuccessful school year, there, were pro there was progress made somewhere, somewhere in your leadership, somewhere in your professional and personal life. So look at that, right? Uh, I don't know what that may be for you. For me, I could look at podcast downloads. I can look at views on YouTube. Uh, a year ago, I didn't even really have this channel. I wasn't putting content out uh, consistently. I certainly wasn't working with the wonderful person who makes these videos look great for you too when they're highly produced. So if I look back, those would all be wins. Those would all be uh, uh, representative of the progress made. And then that makes me feel good because now we can build on that foundation, especially knowing the aspirational goals of where we are headed. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, the question I designed for you there, number nine. And uh, what I'd love to do in terms of ending this video is first, wherever you're watching, make sure you give it a thumbs up and show some appreciation. And then if you're watching on YouTube or if you're not, go over to YouTube and click subscribe so you don't miss any of this content. In the comments below, I challenge you to answer at least one question of the nine end of the year reflection questions that you can use as a strategy to level up for the next school year. Hey, it's Danny, Chief Ruckus Maker at Better Leaders, Better Schools. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye for now and go make a ruckus. Thank you.